Hey guys, let's go ahead and do some more examples with special trig limits here. So, uh, example three, the limit as x approaches zero of tangent of x divided by x. So if we try direct substitution, uh, always the first thing we should do, we're going to get tangent of zero divided by zero. And remember, the tangent of zero equals zero. So what we have from direct substitution is zero divided by zero. And uh, that's bad, right? Sad face. But um, here, if we try to factor, there's nothing good that we can factor. If we try algebraic manipulations, nothing really will work. Um, but, the, you know, trig function here, so that might kind of tip us off. Okay, let's try special trig uh, limits. So if we go to our two special trig limits here, we see that this given problem kind of looks like this special trig limit here, right? So the only difference is instead of a sine, we have a tangent. Um, but that's okay, we'll work with that somehow. So let's see if we can manipulate this uh, to somehow use this fact here. So the trick uh, is to remember that uh, tangent of x equals sine of x over cosine of x. All right. <clears throat> so what we have is tangent of x over x, though. So we'll take this and divide it by x. So that's just like taking this whole thing here and dividing it by x. And another way of writing that is sine of x divided by x cosine of x. OK, so now uh, we see here, here's sine of x and here's x, right? So um, we can rewrite this as sine of x over x times 1 over cosine of x. OK, so <clears throat> ignoring this limit part for now, tangent of x divided by x can be rewritten as sine of x over x times 1 over cosine of x. So that's really uh, good now, because now we can take this limit and say, OK, this limit equals uh, the limit as x approaches 0. So now that we're coming back to the limit here, make sure to carry this uh, limit as x approaches 0 down in your work until you actually substitute. <clears throat> so we know that tan x over x equals this. So let's take this and put it into here. So this is sine of x over x times 1 over cosine of x. Parentheses. Parentheses aren't really necessary because it's a multiplication, but it's good to have anyway. So um, here, what are we doing here? We're taking the limit of one thing times another thing. So one of our properties says that we can split this up into the product of two limits. Uh, but remember, it's only okay to do this if both of these limits exist that we're about to write here. So if uh, one of these doesn't exist, or if they both don't exist, then we have to be a little more careful and we have to do something else. But luckily, uh, we're okay. So this here, this first one, this is our special trig limit, right? Limit as x approaches 0 of sine of x over x. Okay, that is our special trig limit. So this uh, equals 1. And what about this one here? Well, we can just do direct substitution. So if we directly substitute, what do we have? We have 1 divided by cosine of 0. And the cosine of 0 is just 1. Okay, so this is 1 divided by 1, which is 1. So our final answer is 1 times 1, or in other words, just 1. So example 3 tells us that uh, the limit <clears throat> as x approaches 0 of tangent of x divided by x is also equal to 1. So that's kind of interesting there. All right, so that's example 3. Let's take a look at one more here. Or two more, rather. All right, so example 4. <clears throat> Example 4 is going to be um, kind of the same idea, but it'll just look a little bit different. So, let's see here. Example 4. Uh, let's take the limit as t approaches 2 of sine of t minus 2 divided by t minus 2. All right. So, as always, direct substitution first. If we try that, what happens? Well, as t approaches 2, um, or sorry, let's directly substitute 2 in for t, then we'll have sine of 0 divided by 0, or in other words, 0 over 0, which uh, makes us sad. But, um, again, we could just go straight to the special trig limit because we see a trig function here. So, this kind of looks like this, right? Yeah, we have t's instead of x's, but that doesn't matter at all. Um, whatever your variable is, if it's t, if it's x, if it's uh, z, 
S, Y, W, theta, alpha, beta, anything. It does not matter at all what the variable is. You could always use these uh, formulas here. Um, <clears throat> let's see if we can uh, somehow manipulate this in order to use this fact here. Remember the idea is we want this, this, and this to all be the same. All right, X, X, and X. But here we have T, T minus two and T minus two. So they're almost there. But what else do we need? We also need this to be a zero, right? And this isn't a zero, it's a two. Well, luckily this is gonna work out for us because um, what can we say? We could say, let's get rid of our sad face first. We could say uh, as T approaches two, where does T minus two go? T minus two approaches zero, right? So we've used the trick a couple times here. It's not really even a trick, I guess, but uh, we've done this a couple times. Um, T approaches two, subtract two from both sides. You can say T minus two approaches zero. So um, this limit is the same thing as saying this. Limit as T minus two approaches zero of sine of T minus two divided by T minus two. <clears throat> so that's good, why is that good now? Because here, T minus two, T minus two, and T minus two. Those are all three, they're all the same thing, and we have a zero here. So this is all uh, good, this is what we want. So the next step, um, which isn't really necessary, uh, but the next step would be to make a substitution. So we could say, um, let's say x <coughs> equals t minus 2. Okay. So this is just to make this expression a little simpler. Um, so this is going to equal limit now as uh, x approaches 0. Because okay. uh, all of our t minus 2s, we're just going to replace them with an x. So then sine of t minus 2 becomes sine of x and then this t minus 2 just becomes x. So this, um, this exactly is the special trig limit that we're looking at here, right? So we know that this just equals 1. All right, so this is uh, actually a little bit simpler than the other examples because we didn't have to multiply or divide by anything here. We just had to recognize that, okay, um, we want this thing, this thing, and this thing to all be the same thing, and we also want this to be a 0. So if you can uh, manipulate that, you know, if you have a sign on top and no trig on the bottom, <clears throat> then you can manipulate, uh, and if you can manipulate this stuff so that you can use the special trig limit, then, you know, go ahead and do that. That's the thing to do. All right, so let's take a look at uh, one more example here, which will be a little more complicated, um, kind of not really. Let's actually use the other trig limit now. We haven't done anything with the cosine one yet. So example five. Uh, let's see. Let's take the limit as x approaches zero of one minus cosine. Uh, let's say two x divided by seven x. Okay. So if we want, we could put parentheses around the 2x, it doesn't really matter. Um, but anyway, so if we try direct substitution, what's going to happen? Um, 1 minus cosine of 2 times 0. 2 times 0 is 0. Cosine of 0 is 1. 1 minus 1 is 0. What happens on the bottom? 7 times 0 is 0. So we end up with 0 over 0, okay? And that makes us sad. Um, but <clears throat> this kind of looks like, you know, here's a trig function, so we think, okay, special trig limits. And this kind of looks like uh, this special trig limit here, right? So the only difference is um, here we have x, x, and x, but in the given problem we have x, 2x, and 7x. So let's try and algebraically manipulate this kind of like we've been doing um, to see if we can somehow use this one now, all right? So what we want is this, this, and this to be the same thing, and we also want a zero here, all right? So let's see if we can do, somehow do that. Um, First of all, this 7 down here, this is like multiplying everything by 1 7th. So let's just go ahead and pull that out. So we could say equals 1 7th times limit as x approaches 0 of 1 minus cosine 2x uh, divided by x. All right. So now the 1 7th, we could just kind of ignore that for now. Um, so here, x, x, and 2x. So because this 2 is stuck on the x here, um, let's just make this a 2 a 2x and add 2 a 2x, okay? Because we can't get rid of this 2. 
It, yeah, to trig functions, you can have uh, double angle formulas, but that's a really bad idea. It's just going to make things very complicated. Um, so let's go ahead and avoid those. But uh, if we continue with this, um, let's make this into a 2x, that into a 2x. What could we do? Multiply the top and the bottom by 2. All right. So bracket, bracket, not really necessary. Um, this 2 on the top, that's, we're just kind of multiplying everything by 2 because it's in the numerator. So let's just pull it out, just like we did with the 1 7th. So now we're going to have 2 over 7 times the limit as x approaches 0 of what do we got? We have 1 minus cosine 2x. Uh, and then this 2 down here, let's leave it on this x. That's why we put it there in the first place. <clears throat> All right, so that's good. 1 minus cosine 2x over 2x. Uh, now, this needs to become a 2x, but remember, just like with one of our earlier examples with the uh, sine function, um, we could say as x approaches 0, 2x approaches 0, right? So x approaching 0, uh, multiply both sides by 2, and you get 2x approaches 0. So that's good. Um, so now we can just say, let's go ahead and just tack it onto here. So this will be 2x. All right. So now... 2x, 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 these all three are the same thing, and we have a zero here. So that's great, um, because now it's in this form here. Yeah, instead of x, we have 2x, but remember, it doesn't matter, right? Because we can just make a substitution and say, uh, let's say t equals uh, 2x. So instead of 2x, we're just going to call it t. So this is going to be 2 over 7. Okay, two sevenths is still there, just kind of floating around out there, not doing anything yet. Uh, times the limit as t approaches zero of one minus cosine of t divided by t. Now it looks a lot more like this, right? Because it's just a, a variable, there's no two hanging off of that. Um, limit as t approaches zero of one minus cosine t over t. And again, yeah, here it's x, right? But it doesn't matter what you call the variable. It doesn't matter at all. Um, we could still just use this property here. Okay, the point is that this, this, and this have to all three be the same thing, and this should be a zero, right? And that's what we have here, t, 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 and zero. So uh, this is equal to 2 over 7 times zero. In other words, just zero. So that's the answer for example 5.